Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with a condition called surface ear. Uh, it's also known as extostosis. And what surface ear is, is a development of bony nodules, protrusions, call them what you may, in the bony part of the ear canal, so the inner two thirds. And the reason why it's called surface ear is because, um, as the name suggests, um, people who are exposed to cold water, so i.e. surface, are more prone to developing this condition. So it's not a congenital condition, it's an acquired condition. And it's when cold water predominantly, because it can also be cold air, but more often than not it's caused by cold water. Um, when it enters the ear, it causes um, the vasodilation, so um, the expansion of blood vessels in a layer called the periosteum. Now the periosteum is a sheath. I, I actually made reference to it yesterday in yesterday's video. It's a sheath that sits on the bone um, that makes up the inner two thirds of the ear canal, so the osseous portion. And when you've got the dilation of blood vessels in the periosteum, you, it causes inflammation which can then lead to um, periosteitis. So periosteitis is a, an infection, inflammation of that sheath, the periosteum. That then triggers cells called osteoblasts. And these osteoblasts um, help promote um, bony growth. And they sit on the surface of the, the little cells that sit on the surface of the bone. So the, the medical term is called periosteum refrigeration. So when that periosteum um, sheath is cold, the blood vessels dilate, it causes inflammation and uh, periosteitis, which then triggers um, uh, the osteoplasts to then um, form additional bone. And it comes in nodules in surface here. Um, it can vary, and you can get multiple nodules, but you'll see it in both it, both both ears. And I've I've, I've frozen the, the still image and put arrows towards them. But you normally get one superiorly, so to the top of the ear canal. I'd say about eleven or twelve o'clock. Then another one uh, about say three or four o'clock, so the anterior canal wall, and you get a another uh, a bone protrusion nodule uh, more at uh, seven eight o'clock, and you'll see them in a moment. So they normally come in threes, and this is quite large exostosis. You can see the arrows there, and they've actually got another one in between the, the superior one and the anterior one. So the eardrum is still visible. They can still hear. It's not affected their hearing, but and it's unlikely that this is going to um, get any larger because th this all occurred in the patient's young, young, younger years. It's normally um, uh, most, in terms of age group, 20 to 40s of age, this patient's no longer exposed to cold water, but they used to live on the coast and they used to dive and do a lot of cold water swimming, which has caused this. Uh, they also have it in this ear. It's not as pronounced. Now, um, because it's not really causing an issue for the patient, they do get wax buildup. Now, we don't know if this wax is because of that. It sometimes can be because the bony protrusions can trap the wax and stop the skin from migrating out of the ear, which then means you get a wax buildup in the ear canal. Um, but it's not affecting the hearing now. If those bony protrusions are so large where it's completely constricting the ear canal, sound can't get through and the patient's getting ear infections, then surgery can be performed where the uh, ENT surgeons can uh, chisel out, drill out that bone. But it's, I don't think it's necessary for this patient. And these, the growth of these bony protrusions in response to cold water is thought, it, it, it's not fully understood, but it could be an evolutionary... Uh, defense mechanism to protect the eardrum from barrow trauma. So if you're diving into cold water, you've got all that water at high pressure entering your ear canal, and there's always a risk of barrow trauma. So uh, trauma to the eardrum, potential perforation. So by the ear developing these bony um, spores, uh, sorry, not spore spurs in the ear canal, it, it's believed that they may serve as a defense mechanism. Uh, so it prevents that full force of the water from hitting the eardrum. Um, so that's one of the, the beliefs. Um, the condition is more prevalent in men, and it's not because it's... Uh, some of the literature say it's because men undertake more water activities, but I think they, there's a study that did a sample. As a, as a, um, they had a um, equal 
cohort of male, um, uh, male and females and equal exposure. They tried to balance out the, the gender aspect and they still found actually men were suffering from this more than women. So uh, don't quite, it's not fully understood why. So here you can see on this side, it's not as pronounced, but you've got one at 12 o'clock, one at four o'clock, one at nine o'clock. And the eardrum's more visible this side. And so you can, you can actually see the blood um, vessels on that bony protrusion at the roof of the ear canal. I'm just going to use a Jobson horn, the underside, just to delicately scoop out this soft wax near the entrance. The patient does have to attend yearly. Um, always makes a big difference when we clean their ears out. They're always very grateful. And see the entrance of both ear canals are slightly slit, slightly narrow. But yeah, other than that, I'm quite happy with that. Um, that's the the wax and it's predominantly wax but a bit of dead skin as well keratin in both sides on the tissue well i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well and speak soon bye